Elliot, here's why philosophy of biology intrigues me. Uh, my original training was in the biological sciences, my doctor is in neuroscience, and philosophy has been a lifelong interest of mine. But I never put the two together. I never thought philosophy of biology, they were like two completely separate interests. Um, the field has developed remarkably over the last four or five decades. You've been a pioneer in it. Give me a sense of how the field has developed, your own involvement in it, uh, the kinds of questions that you ask. Okay. Let me start back in 1859 with Darwin's publication of The Origin of Species. And from the get-go, it was clear to everybody that this theory had immense philosophical significance. Uh, how is belief in God related to Darwin's theory? What does Darwin's theory of tell us about uh, ethics, uh, right and wrong? What does it tell us about human nature? Mm. I mean, just from the beginning, everybody recognized this as uh, a fundamental thing. And philosophy of biology began, the philosophy of Darwin's theory began with Darwin and has continued nonstop until the present. Mm. What's happened since the 1960s is a continuation of some of those questions. They weren't dropped. They're still with us now. Um, but new questions became interesting. One of them was the result of a big controversy that happened inside of biology in the 1960s and 70s about the units of selection problem. Does natural selection just involve organisms competing with other organisms in the same species? Do groups of organisms compete with other groups? That would be an example of group selection. That was a giant debating question in, among biologists then, and philosophers, myself included, recognized that there were a number of important philosophical issues that were raised by these questions about reductionism and so on. Right. So that's, then in the 70s, we have the selfish gene of that's right. and now you, now you have a unit of selection at the very lowest level. There's this a huge spectrum, so that's a, a wonderful philosophical arena. Yeah, and it's just trying to figure out there's, there are empirical questions about how you would go about thinking about this question, but there's a lot of conceptual clarification mm -hmm. that has to go on to think about what group selection is, how is it different from individual selection. Uh, and only when you get clear about these concepts can you then sort of see what kinds of evidence would tell you what the right picture is about what's going on in nature. So that was something that really got going as a subject in, in the in, the, in more recent ways, uh, it, was, it was there to be talked about because Darwin was the person who thought up the idea of group selection in the first place, uh, but it became something that philosophers got excited about much, much later. How about your own involvement? Um, the use of selection was how I got interested in um, philosophy of biology. I didn't, I didn't study biology when I was a student. Uh, my, my PhD was not about evolutionary theory or anything to do with biology. It's about a topic in general philosophy of science. And then by accident, I read a book review of, of the book that was published by, uh, in 1966 by George C. Williams. It was called Adaptation and Natural Selection. And as a lark, I just got the book and started to read it. And I felt like I had discovered a philosophical gold mine because the book was just filled with interesting conceptual things. It was very philosophical. Williams was a, was a wonderful biologist, but it was, it was like, it was, it was just this beautiful um, topic to me, um, uh, full of low hanging fruit, uh, lots of interesting things to sort out. And I had the impression that philosophers had not really gotten into it. So I mm. decided to dive in. Mm. That, 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 that's great. Uh, I, I want to be sure we understand that when we talk about philosophy of biology, the, the origin of the r needs developed out of evolutionary biology, but the need for philosophy of biology is broader than just studying evolution because biology yes. is such a broad topic today. It, it, it goes from molecular biology to you know, healthcare to death. I mean, there are many different subjects that that are ripe for philosophy of biology thinking, even though it, its origin was in evolutionary biology. I think that's a, I think that's a fair statement. Um, and I wrote a book once called Philosophy of Biology, and I 
realized uh, not long after that it was a misnomer. It should have been called philosophy of evolutionary biology. And one of the great things that's happened to the field is that individuals have explored other kinds of biology, like the philosophy of epidemiology, sure. um, philosophy connected to cancer research. Mm -hmm. These are, inch and many other examples have right. come up since then. Right. When I first started to research the field, of course I bought or, or got, got e-books uh, for all the philosophy of biology books. And that was the first thing I noticed that this is all about evolutionary biology, it's interesting, but <laughs> you know, I didn't see anything about neuroscience. That was my area uh -huh. yeah, at, at, for the books I, I was looking at. And I looked at you know, four or five of them. And so I think this is a, this is a fascinating area and, and I, I I, I, I definitely want to explore the depth of evolutionary biology, which you've been a pioneer in, of course, but also to understand those principles and see how they apply to many of the other areas of biology, which are booming today. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, what are some of the um, uh, latest things in the field, or where do you see philosophy of biology going in the next uh, decade or so? As you said, um it was dominated by philosophy of evolutionary biology. That's still an ongoing topic, but uh, there are so many new things that are, are, are getting developed now. I mentioned um, epidemiology, cancer research, um, ecology is another yeah. area connecting uh, both the science of ecology and issues about environmental ethics. These are growth areas.